YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Color is amazing, but what is color? Well, color is light. Light, as we all know, is a wave, and like any other wave, it has a frequency. Color is simply the name we give to the frequencies of light that our eyes can detect. The lowest frequency light human eyes can see is red, and the highest is violet. And in between these two colors lie all the other colors we know of that make up the visible spectrum. So a red object appears red to our eyes because its chemical makeup reflects red frequencies and absorbs the rest. Plants are green because chlorophyll absorbs all wavelengths of light except for green. So in an odd kind of way, an object's colour is every colour but the one we see. White objects are white because they reflect all frequencies of light, and black is black because it absorbs all frequencies of light. The energy absorbed is converted into heat, so black objects are warm and white objects are cool. But here's a cooler thought. Plants! Why you green? I mean, your job is to absorb sunlight to make food for yourself, right? So if you were black, you'd absorb all the sunlight and hence make more food. Why you no black? Short answer is serendipity. And despite being non-optimal, green chlorophyll is extremely good at what it does. And this lends weight to the idea that other non-optimal solutions may exist out there in the cosmos. Planets covered in blue, red or purple flora may not be as crazy as it first sounds. Anyways, not all objects have their colour determined by reflection. The sky is blue because blue wavelengths of light are scattered by the molecules in the atmosphere. Similarly, my eyes are green because, in part, green light is scattered by the turbid medium in the stroma of my iris. Oh, and FYI, water isn't colourless, it's blue. And not because it reflects our blue sky. H2O is intrinsically a faint blue colour regardless of its surroundings. We humans are, for the most part, trichromats. That is, we have three different types of photoreceptor cells in our retinas called cones. One cone for detecting red light, another for green, and another for blue. Shine a red light into our eyes and the red cone will trigger telling your brain, hey, you're seeing red here. Same idea for green and blue. But what about yellow? We have no yellow cones, so how do we see yellow things? Shining a true yellow frequency of light into our eyes will trigger both the red and green cones, which the brain then interprets as yellow. Pop quiz, what colour is this? Yeah, not even close. Instead of yellow, what you're actually seeing is millions of tiny red and green pixels. We humans, as advanced as we are, cannot distinguish between light that has a yellow frequency or light that is a mixture of red and green frequencies, as both will trigger the same response in our brain. Yellow, not red, green. This is the well-known and beautiful rainbow flag. Colourful, eh? Well, not if you suffer from one of the many forms of colour blindness like monochromaticism, deuteranopia, protonopia or tritonopia. Regardless of the intrinsic physical colour of light, our eyes have the last say in what it is we actually see. Sea lions, being monochromats, see the world as if it were an old film noir. Dichromats, like dogs, see the world only in shades of yellow and blue, no reds. We trichromatic humans can see about 7 to 10 million colours, but this is nowhere near as advanced as organic colour detection gets. Honeybees are also trichromats, except rather than having red, green and blue cones, they have green, blue and ultraviolet cones. Speaking of ultraviolet, goldfish go one better. They are tetrachromats and can see in the red, green, blue and ultraviolet. But let's cut to the chase. The granddaddy of us all when it comes to perceiving the world is the mantis shrimp. With not two cones, nor three, nor four. No, but a mind-blowing 16 different types of cones. These incredible little guys see in the visible spectrum and the ultraviolet. They have perfect depth perception and can distinguish the difference between linear and circular polarized light. And I bet you they wouldn't have a problem distinguishing between the different types of yellow like we do. To quote the oatmeal, to a mantis shrimp, this rainbow flag would be nothing short of a thermonuclear bomb of light and beauty. And I often ask myself, why aren't there more sentient homosexual vexillographers of the mantis shrimp persuasion? So who is right? Who sees the world for what it really is? Do I? Do you? Does a colorblind person? What about the godlike mantis shrimp? What we see of the world as filtered through our sensory inputs is known as our phaneron. And every creature's phaneron is equally valid. Granted, there is a sort of undeniable state of the universe, but pragmatically speaking, it's all about perception. And as we've discussed, perception is not perfect, and sometimes very strange things can happen. 
Synesthesia is a phenomenon where the stimulation of one sensory pathway leads to an involuntary response in a second sensory pathway. This leads people to sometimes see sounds, or hear colours, or even taste words. The Hungarian composer Franz Liszt had a form of synesthesia called chromesthesia. That is, sounds would invoke in Liszt a strong colour association. So much so that he would frequently say to his players things like, That is a deep violet, please depend upon it. Not so rose. To which they would invariably respond, Damn son, this cat be cray cray. Now through careful and deliberate empirical study, it has become clear to me that Franz Liszt was not a human, but in fact a mantis shrimp in a human shaped exosuit. Kind of like an artistic Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, only exponentially weirder. And the weird train rolls on when colour meets language. How we define colour linguistically is an absolute minefield of confusion and oddities. Consider the English terms blue and green. Why the distinction? Why not grew? In Vietnamese, blue and green are the same colour. So you can have ocean grew and leaf grew. Russians, they don't have a word for pink. It's all red to them, but unlike us, they do distinguish between blue and light blue. And this isn't only a present day oddity. In the Iliad, Homer describes sheep as being wine colored, honey as green, and the sky as bronze. And the word blue doesn't once show up in his writings. Furthermore, ancient Greeks define color by hue, so they would have one word for dark brown, violet, green, etc., and one for the lighter hues. Linguistic relativity, also known as a sapphire war hypothesis asks the question, does language fundamentally alter our perception of the world or does it merely affect our existing interpretations of it? Were Homer's wine coloured sheep actually wine coloured or were they wine coloured because he said they were wine coloured? Now this may seem crazy but the fact is we don't actually know. My guess is that it's probably a bit of both and you can't discuss language without discussing culture. Take the colour purple for example. In Thailand, widows wear purple as a sign of mourning, but in Japan, it is the colour of privilege and wealth. Whereas in Chinese culture, a reddish purple can symbolise luck and fame, and we here in the West see purple as the colour of royalty. It follows then that the colours we see, what we call them, and in particular what symbolisms we give to them, can in a sense be seen as being totally arbitrary. So what's my answer to the question, what is colour? Well, colour is... kind of whatever you think it is. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.